Let's see. Okay, I'm recording as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, this is Samir Azizi, and welcome to Azizi Podcast. And I'm excited to say that this is a special episode. This episode is very dear to my heart because uh, today we have two wonderful guests who are also my business partners, Dr. Jam Brown and Alex Liang. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? Hey, excited to be on here and uh, share our latest project. Thank you. I'm super excited. Lots, lots of updates to share. It's not often that we have uh, three people on the podcast, right? So I will try to uh, keep it. Um, well, first of all, I'm switching to the speaker view, and I'll try to keep it kind of. I'll try to have my pauses so that we don't interrupt each other. But overall, um, I'm very excited to have you on the pod, uh, both of you. And this podcast is about something that we have created. It's it's called Smart Closer AI, and it's basically something. It's 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 a I would say the mission of it is for us to onboard as many people as possible to the world of artificial intelligence. Why? Because this is coming, this is inevitable, and it's better to be prepared. And we want to have people prepared for what's coming. If you're a working professional, we want you to know how to use certain AI tools so that you're better at your work, more efficient and faster. But before we go into that, I'd like to ask you about your backgrounds. Um, where are you coming from? How did you end up where you are? And I'll start with you, Jen. All right. Well, I'm Jen. Um, my academic background is more on the biology side. And after I finished my PhD in neuroscience, I ended up pivoting into tech, specifically into AI, working at a research firm that had different applications. So there were applications to biotechnology and applications to finance. And now I work as a consultant in the tech space and it's really been a fascinating journey. And it, early days I was drawn into AI because I could see the potential, the potential that could change the field I worked in before, but also for fields like real estate. Thank you, Jen. Alex, what about you? Awesome. Well, my background comes more from um, the design and media world. Um, I started my career in in. PR and marketing and editorial um, in the fashion industry, fashion and lifestyle. And then I um, became one of the first social media influencers professionally in Canada. And from that branch into consulting on social media, marketing, the whole digital landscape. Um, I've always loved real estate. So a few years ago, that industry pulled me in. I started, of course, you know, from the consulting and marketing route. Um, working in the industry that way and then um you know inevitably uh got my real estate license and taken that on full time one interesting detail about both of you is that you've known each other for a long time can you tell about a little bit about, a little bit about that <laughs> yeah since like 1990 what was it five yeah, <laughs> dating, dating we, yourself <laughs> we, yeah we we started uh we were in grade two and we were in the same class, actually, yeah, from grade two all the way through grade 12. Jen, what are your thoughts? What are, what are your memories of that time? Um, I mean, those were like simpler times. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually lived pretty close to each other. You could basically walk to each other's houses way back when. And yeah. um, which is funny because Alex has kind of gone full circle and is now like, you know, set up his real estate practice in this neighborhood, essentially, that we grew yeah. up in. Um, but yeah, it was a, those were formative years for us. And, you know, you know, when, when you're little, you make these friendships that, you know, sometimes just last forever. And look at all Rare of us and amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all those years later, here we are uh, trying to uh, work on something that is, uh, so huge, so gigantic, you know, artificial intelligence really come uh, got on the market as in like a chat GPT sort of thing a little bit more than a year ago. And now it's just everywhere. Everyone's using it, not just chat GPT, but also uh, other AI uh, learning tools, AI machine learning and all of that. So I'd like to ask both of you, when was that aha moment for you when you, you realized that, wow, this AI thing is here to stay and it really, really helps me uh, with my work, with my tasks, and just that potential that you see. But Jen, I'll start with you. 
All right. Um, well, I feel like there's different aha moments, right? Um, because I did do work in AI pre chat GPT. And, you know, from that point, you know, fiddling with, you know, algorithms during my PhD when I was testing stuff out that I never really ended up using, but I was exploring to actually seeing applications of it to spaces that I worked in professionally. I, I saw its full potential, but at that point it was all behind, um, it was all like in a very closed off space. And what really I think was an accelerating point was when ChatGPT was introduced because all of a sudden these advanced algorithms were available to be used and you know in the way that people wanted to. We've been interacting with uh, machine learning for for a very long time. We you know all the devices we use use it, but now we were kind of the architects of you know what it could spit out to a certain degree. We could be the the captain of that ship. And so for me, when ChatGPT hit the market, I was just, I was stunned. I was like, this is revolutionary. Alex, was was that something uh, of the same for you? How did you encounter uh, your first AI tool? Definitely not the same as Jen. <laughs> She's been <laughs> in it way longer than me. I think um, Chat, well, I guess, I mean, AI, I've, I've encountered like AI working in the background of social media, social media algorithms, all that kind of engineering of all that stuff. And I knew, of course, that was all happening. Um, Chat GPT is the first time for me, of course, like really diving into it and learning all about it and how it could actually benefit me or, you know, streamline my business, my day and all of that. And uh, really, thanks to you guys, you taught me how to use it properly and set it up and everything and, and through kind of actually putting together this course that, um, really opened my eyes to it, which is, which is kind of neat. Yeah. It was kind of a learn by doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny because as, as Jen said, AI has been around for a while. The machine learning has been around for a while, mm -hmm. but with this text output and, and input, it's, it's almost like we finally taught how to speak to it and how to use it. I mean, the beauty about it is that anyone can use it now. You don't really have to know how to code. You don't, you just want, you just need to communicate with it. And that's the beauty of it. And I feel like a lot of people are still kind of not grasping the concept of how easy can you get uh, into it. Like my mom, I recently was teaching her how to use it. And, you know, as soon as I taught her, like I actually just screen capped everything that I do on ChatGPT app. And I just sh sent her the video of my work. And it finally clicked with her. That was her aha moment where it's not very intimidating. It's not intimidating at all. It's like if you are speaking with a, like just a person, just chatting with a person and you just ask that person for things or ask questions or just clarifications or anything like that and you get instant results. And that's just the beauty of it is that it's very easy to start. But once you start and you really, really get into it, it's really, really amazing of what kind of things you can learn so quickly and all the potential that you can accomplish. So Alex, since you mentioned our class, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, it's obviously, or not obviously because we haven't mentioned it yet, but it is about real estate. And the class is created for real estate agents by real estate agents such as yourself. And of course, with the uh, help of mm -hmm. myself and with the help of, uh, Ali, uh, with the help of Jen. Um, could you talk a little bit more about the class? Who is this class really for and what to expect from the class? Yeah, for sure. I think it's really for any agent you or been in the business for decades um, that wants to really make their day, make their workload more efficient, streamline that um, and, you know, have that kind of almost like a virtual assistant type of thing um, help them throughout all of their job tasks. Um, AI is new to all of us. ChatGPT is something new to all of us. So again, it's like really for any agent, um, new or, you know, veteran agent in the business for decades um, who wants to just get that extra little boost. Um, it's super helpful to, of course, for like promoting, um, you know, putting together content for social media, your blogs, all that stuff um, really, really helps out in that and, and just condenses the time of the workload down. So Alex, I, I bet you talk to real estate agents on your daily basis, right? There are a colleagues of yours. Do you all, like? Do you ever mention uh, AI? Do they mention AI to you? How does the conversation usually go? Like, how? What's the experience level like on the market um, right now? 
right now i think it's still a little bit wild west um which is kind of a place i've been before with the the beginnings of social media i think a lot of people they know what it is they kind of get what it can do they don't really know how to use it or you know just started using it kind of just at random and trial and error um so those people you know that they're they're kind of getting they're understanding how to use it and they might end up teaching themselves but then there's also people who just know it exists are intrigued by it and i think that's really who our class would be for too it's like just an intro making it easy making it approachable um and not being intimidated by chat gpt because it's definitely not going to take our jobs but it's something that makes our jobs a lot easier i would even say that i also agree that it's not necessarily going to take um like all of our jobs or anything like that although it's possible but it's mostly like an opportunity for you to boost your skills and actually excel at what you do at 100x rates so it's kind of like a competitive tool that allows you to be much much more um competitive against your colleagues against your coworkers, or against you know other firms for example so if i'm a real estate agency i would definitely consider you know educating all of my agents on ai and how easy it is to 10x 100x your productivity so that you can really beat that uh, agency across the road, basically. Uh, Jen, as, as as someone from academia, when 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 I approached you about this uh, this idea, what what did you think about it? Because I mean, overall, it's kind of like a an introduction thing to AI. But how um, what was it like for you to wrap your mind about you know, kind of like just introducing the the science of it to just your average Joe, the the, the folks you know who are just working professional. Well, you know. I'm not a mathematician and I'm not an engineer <laughs> and those are the the real those are the people who build the algos and so from my perspective and those are the people I've learned from as much as I can trying to teach something so complex to people pre chat gpt would have been very difficult because we weren't people weren't lay people weren't interacting with this technology but you know from the perspective of like how we were going to educate professionals on how to use it to improve their workflow it made me rethink a lot of how i had framed ai and machine learning generally um because all of a sudden what was less important was the underlying you know mathematics and principles because the way that people could effectively interact with this technology was not by understanding those things or the complexity of neural nets, but really to prompt engineer and learn how to converse with the algorithm in a way that's different than say conversing with Google, right? Like we don't converse with Google. And so I think a lot of people that have started to adopt the technology are kind of using their old habits with ChatGPT. Um, so it really required a shift. It's more about training people to think about how to leverage this technology, what kind of skills they have to focus on for that. Um, but then also have people reflect on their own workflow as well, because the only way that technology really improves efficiencies is if you understand what, like your workflow in its entirety, but also where it can accelerate or where you spend time spinning wheels. Um, so in my mind, that's kind of where I landed with this, but it wasn't, it was an interesting process because academics are very <laughs> detail oriented and like to go down the rabbit hole. Absolutely. You know, when we were developing this class, I could see how, you know, the wheels were spinning for you and, you know, you, you were like really trying to get into like the nitty gritty and, and I was trying to always say like, Hey, like always let's, let's remember, this is just for folks who never have encountered, you know, anything like that in their lives. So we should really, really approach it very softly. But uh, Jen, in your opinion, what do you think is, uh, what do you think is the most difficult part for our students, uh, for our customers basically to, um, What's the most difficult thing about learning AI for them? Like, how, like in terms of approaching it for the first time? I think kind of removing expectations about what technology should be doing, because this is such a novel ad to people. We don't, with this, ChatGPT is really the first time where we have content generating algorithms. So the the real thing and this is actually a challenge a challenge that we're definitely working on is trying to get people to think about their workflow differently right and how where they need to spend their time and where they don't need to spend spend their time right and 
I think the narrative that's interesting about AI is that, you know, people like AI is going to take people's jobs. And actually the answer is not necessarily. And if you're clever about it, you can leverage these algos to do the silly things or the time consuming things so that you can actually do the in-person things more and better. And for real estate agents, that's super critical, right? Because it's an it's a person to person business. You're developing those relationships. And so having agents think about the time suck in their day and what a text generating app can do or a, like a virtual assistant or an ideator, um, that's, I think, a huge win. So trying to frame it in that context, but it's it's many different angles to communicate its efficacy. Thanks, Jen. Uh, and Alex, you've been a tremendous help in developing this class, and we were really uh, relying on your expertise when we were uh, doing the lectures, and you were doing the lectures as well. Uh, Alex, how do you think we addressed, like, what was it like to address those issues, those difficulties for real estate agents? From the perspective of a real estate agent, uh, how do you think our class really addresses those um, those difficulties, these novelties of, of AI, of artificial intelligence and chat GPT? Well, definitely one of the biggest things that I, I think every real estate agent can agree with is that uh, there's never enough time in the day. So this really, for me, was something that, well, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's certainly something that I come up against. So for me, it was very important to figure out, like, how can, where, what are the aspects of my day-to-day -day tasks that can be streamlined by ChatGPT? So definitely marketing, promotion content creation, using that content in your marketing, all of that is something that chat GPT can do very easily. Um, and that lets us focus on the things that we do need to know. We can't rely on chat GPT for so like contracts, legal stuff, um, you know, showings, the things that you have to be there in person for the phone calls with clients um, and having all of your, you know, being able to put your personal promotion marketing um neighborhood guides all that kind of stuff if you can have that on somewhat of an autopilot and chat gpt helping with that um you know listing creation that takes a huge chunk of um creative output and creative uh, energy off of the agent and into the hands of chat gpt then you get to end up just you know you get the content you skim through you get to edit it the way you want but you didn't have to think of like creating all sorts of stuff that i'm so sorry my dog is just oh, no really needing attention <laughs> she's like you're you're talking more about ai than me I can't, i'm not ai so I can't, ai can't replace me but um yeah it's just you know that i think it's it's the time thing for sure and it, it, we really focus on that in our course and how to use the chat gpt um and just get it to create that content for us create it come up with ideas, even prompt us with ideas on like topics. Like say, okay, I don't even know where to begin creating the content. Ask chat GPT, what are some great content ideas? That spurs your own brainstorming. And you kind of, like Jen was saying, it's like almost interacting with a person where you're, you're, um, you're having this conversation with chat GPT. It's different than Google. I mean, I even started using chat GPT for like gardening advice which is really cool <laughs> absolutely i mean and that's the beauty of it it's just like it's not limited just to one thing like i'm using it for everything as well and again there just a reminder there's other products than chat gpt as well but we're just going to talk about this one for now just because it's one of the first ones and uh uh, right now, it's available for any kind of subjects, right? You can talk about the films. Like, sometimes if I see a movie, I'm like, what was that movie called, like, with that actor? And, like, why was that show canceled? Was there any speculations? Sometimes I even do, like, well, pretend that you are a gossip journal, a magazine, and tell me all the details about why that particular show was canceled or that particular actor just left the show because I just want to see any sort of spicy details there just now because I'm crazy like that. And But anyways, <laughs> Alex, if you had to speculate, uh, in the world of AI and and the world of real estate, the two combined, where do you see the two going? You know, the real estate agency and uh, the real estate industry and the AI world in like five to 10 years. How like how common do you think this would be? And what should we expect if you just had to fantasize? Obviously, this is not a prediction, but just like in your gut, where do you feel it's going? Well, definitely one of the big things that I think is on the horizon is, is virtual stage AI and using AI oh. to like generate imagery. And, and that's one that 
that I'm really um, interested in following. I think the technology is not quite there yet. Like we're getting there, um, but you know, I've tried all kinds and it hasn't been quite right yet. Um, but you know, we're really close. We're really, really close. Um, I definitely think, you know, more content creation for sure. Um, maybe even having, I was thinking, you know, one of the things that chat GPT right now is unreliable for is that, you know, we can't rely on for like legal advice or rules or um, things like that, but it might be interesting later, we might end up having, you know, other, I guess, G GPTs, AI <laughs> helpers um, that are regulated by, you know, say the real estate board, and they're able to then put in the right answers. So when agents go to that database for the knowledge, they can have a conversation with this and guess what, they're getting the, the actual true answer. Um, back and I think that would be something that would be a huge game changer game changer 100% I don't know 100%. Jen you're not I feel like you're nodding <laughs> Jen <laughs> yeah, I, tell us Jen your your perspective please um yeah no it's interesting when it comes to important information like legal information regulatory information I'm curious to see how that evolves, right? Because there are legal responsibilities at that point and um, consequences to giving incorrect information. So that's why you see the privacy policy and also the terms of use for like um, OpenAI's chat GPT. So it's like going to sometimes not give you accurate information, but there needs to be, I think, as you know, these as generative AI kind of moves toward the space where we start using it for very trusted and important things, there's going to be some oversight in regulation around that, right? Um, but I think that, you know, that is that is going to be the future in a lot of respects. So I'm, I'm curious to see how, how that pans out, because that's going to be a more systematic adoption, even at like, you know, the government level um, and, of and AI. Absolutely. And and being on the sort of the academia part of it, you obviously um, talk to a lot of, um, I would say, professors or people who are in the know or people from the industry as well. And I was just wondering, like, from your perspective, what are the future developments in the artificial intelligence space that you're most excited about? Like, what are you right now kind of keeping your pulse on, uh, finger on the pulse? Like, we're like, oh, this is interesting. This is something that I should kind of like keep an eye on. There's so many things. At least something. It's I'm, a I'm... huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's totally fair. Um, yeah, it's. I think you know AI. I'm just going to preface this by saying it is a huge domain with an application of so many parts of mathematics. Um, but I'm actually, and this answer changes quite frequently because I think every every month I stumble on something new. Um, but one of the places that I think is most interesting, it doesn't fully apply to real estate, but it is generative AI, is the use of, you know, gen AI in, in health um, and understanding, Ooh. you know, physiology. Um, and so this has been, it's been played around. It's, it's hard to know where it's going to go. There's different parts of it. There's synthetic data that's used in clinical trials. Um, but there's also um, synthetic data for like mo small molecule discovery very early in the pipeline for clinical trials. So like trying to figure out what kind of molecules might be um, useful in medication um, and it helps speed up the trial process. It helps actually just keep it efficient. Um, but that's been going on for a while, even pre chat GPT coming to the market, but it sometimes crops back in. But I think um Kind of, I'm going to add one thing to this. Sure. Up. Okay, Samir. Of course. <laughs> um, the, I think actually, and this is maybe not AI specific, but it kind of is. We, When we're talking about artificial intelligence, we are now being forced to reckon with what it's consuming. And that is data. And, you know, I, I've, I've worked with a lot of huge data sets in my career. And that understanding how we collect data, how we keep it clean, where we hold it, um, and methods for that that are standardized, that I think is one of the most important topics that's coming up a lot right now, because it's very sexy to apply algorithms to data, but now I think people are realizing, hey, you know, the data that we're actually throwing in needs to be good. Otherwise, the answers are, we're getting are gonna be like spurious. So, and I think when we go back to real estate, there's a lot of interesting real estate data, and I actually don't know what structure it's in, but that's actually going to probably be informing 
a lot of business in the future, understanding how areas develop and how to optimize development, but also for investments as well, how to predict what part of a city is going to be the highest yield if you invest in a property. I think that that's one of the places, if you can get the data to align. No, absolutely. I, I actually, it's very fascinating. I, I used to work in clinical trials and I and I kind of have a little bit of a uh, an understanding of how this whole thing works in terms of, you know, trying to find uh, certain uh, cures to th certain diseases. And and my, my hope is really that uh, with the help of AI, we can accelerate this process and, and perhaps, you know, in my mind, like it's kind of like mix and matching different things, but with the uh, with the volume of, uh, of that with the volume of this experiment that AI can provide for us, at least on paper, I feel like perhaps there's some sort of a progress that can happen at much much faster rate, and who knows, maybe maybe this will end up in uh, us as in humanity discovering some um, some cures to diseases that you know hasn't been uh, done before, and we all striving to do. But anyway, so that's why I'm very hopeful for just the artificial intelligence in general. Just that acceleration of speed is just so great. And coming back to you know our thing with professionals who are who are just new to that and trying to get on board with AI, whether it's a real estate agent or just um, an accountant, uh, administrative assistant. There's a lot of things how you can improve your life uh, using machine learning, using tools like uh, ChatGPT, Grok. Um, even Meta right now has a, a Llama. Uh, AI model that is actually available to a lot of people uh, for free, I think, through their WhatsApp uh, and even Instagram. There's a lot of things you can do, a lot of playing around. And I would like just to remind everybody that we have our course. Uh, it's basically a chat GPT for uh, real estate agents, and it's a beginner's guide. And you can find it on Udemy. Uh, we will provide links under this videos as well, uh, where you can click on that and just register. Um, for the class and just kind of give yourself an introduction to it. Go through our lectures. It's a relatively uh, short class. And I just want to ask um, some of you, because I, I know that some of our uh, listeners and some of our customers already took this class, but um, Alex, what do you feel like the, the feedback was from, uh, from, from the people who took the class? I know we have a lot of reviews and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, I think so far people have been... Um pretty excited about it. Um, you know, again, it's for anyone new or veteran agent, um, even if you're not a real real estate agent, actually, uh, you can take the course and just learn how to use chat GPT. A lot of the bulk of our content anyway, um, is about content creation. So if you're in that space at all, um, it's it's great to learn on how to, you know, program chat GPT, customize it, use it for your uses and how to um, practice prompt. Um, so our feedback has been has been pretty great so far. People have really enjoyed it. I think they've enjoyed that it's clear, it's concise. Um, you know, it's it's not too much of a time commitment, and you you can get going right away. Right after you should feel confident to uh, use it and apply it to what you're doing right away. I agree. I think the the positive feedback for me personally has been a huge reinforcement to to provide even more uh, useful lectures to our students. And uh, I'm very passionate about education. I really want to make sure that a lot of people, no matter their age, background, ethnicity, or geographic location, that they can take advantage of that. The, the beauty of uh, of our century, of our time, is that as long as you have the internet connection, you can have access to unlimited resources. And now with the help of AI, with the help of um, you know text models such as ChatGPT, you can actually accelerate your learning by just prompting all any information that you want to get. Uh, learning prompt engineering in general is, is an art of itself, I would say. Because what I've noticed lately is that uh, for some people, prompt engineering, and when I say prompt engineering, I mean, you know, basically asking the right questions, uh, providing the right input for uh, for the text model. Uh, it's it's not as easy. For some people, it's easy and intuitive. For the other people, you, you really have to teach them. You really have to understand, like let them understand that there is a logic behind it. And that's another part where I feel like we can really, really excel is to educate our students and our customers on how to use uh, text models and how to properly uh, prompt engineer wouldn't you say that um that's that's correct uh jen or would you what, what's your opinion on that as a as an academic yeah i mean you know i think actually learning how to prompt engineer is very similar to being in it like someone who does experiments right and for me most of my learning in this space has been 
learning something new from either you, Samir, or the internet, and then <laughs> applying it and then like iterating, right? Because I mean, full disclosure, I, when ChatGPT hit the market, I was kind of slower to adopt it. Like I was using it, but I, it didn't, I didn't quite grok what I was supposed <laughs> I see to what be you did. fully doing. <laughs> yeah. So I, it took time and, but it's really just, you know, getting used to how you interact with these algorithms. Cause like I hadn't interacted with algorithms in that way before either. I know I worked, I've worked in the space, but my role has been quite different. And so you really got to play with it and then read people's blog posts about it. But what I like about the course is that we get straight to the point. So you have that foundation, right? And there's, you know, I, I audit a lot of educational um, products on the internet for my own learning and, you know, getting to the point fast is what I look for. Um, Cause we, none of us have a ton of time to dedicate to, to learning, unfortunately. And so I think, you know, we give that foundation and then hopefully enough of the inspiration that you can go and experiment with your prompts. And that's really how you learn and get comfortable. It's, you know, we can give you X amount of information, but really it's like your own inspiration to go further. But I'm excited to add more details on prompt engineering and other places where uh, real estate professionals can uh, use chat GPT as well as other types of generative AI. And I am excited as well. Speaking of uh, lack of time, I know all of us are extremely busy people. Therefore, I will conclude this episode of Azizi Podcast. And hopefully this is not the last time that we will meeting here on the pod. Uh, Dr. Jen Brown and uh, Alex Liang, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate both of you. And uh, I'm looking forward to creating even more educational content with all of you. Thank you. Us too. Thanks so much for having yeah. us on today. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thanks. It's so great to be here. And I will leave the details about where to find you uh, in terms, if anyone wants to uh, consult with you, uh, in the description of this episode. This has been Azizi Podcast, and I'm its host, Samira Azizi. Until next time.